So this new feature I'm super excited about, even more excited about than the previous one. What is it? Making primitives. That's right, Blender finally has the out of the box capability to generate primitives. Not quite out of the box yet because we need to download a special version, an alpha version and enable a couple of special hidden settings. So let's jump and show you how it works. We go to builder.blender.org slash download and download the latest 2.92 alpha. So once the zip files is downloaded, you can unzip it and you can fire it up. Okay, so now that we have Blender 2.92 fired up and started, we need to go to edit and preferences, select interface and make sure you have developer extras on. If we don't have developer extras, that hidden experimental menu is missing. So click it on and then we need to go to experimental and select add object tool. All right. So now back in Blender, we should have a new icon here, which is adding primitives. At the moment we can add cube, cone, cylinder, UV sphere and icosphere. So let's give it a try. And let's try now to go into edit mode, select an edge. And we'll move that edge slightly just to see what would happen with our normals, right? Because we're playing a bit, so our normals are not so straight and aligned to orthogonal directions anymore. So let's go back into object mode now and select add primitives. And as you can see, the icon that they have at the moment indicates the fact that there are different normals that are being selected. So let's give it a shot. And it works exactly as you would expect. And it works brilliantly. This is going to make such a big difference on concept design, on scaling, on so many things really, because it always aligns to the normals now. And I definitely got that in the comments in the previous video, asking people with the extrude manifold, why I couldn't do that. Well, now we, we can. So let's go and try adding cones. And as you would expect, they work in a very similar way, always snapping to the normals. Now they also have adding cylinder. So let's try to add a cylinder now. And if you hold shift while you click, it constrains it. So it makes it a perfect circle. So let's hold shift again and snap. And again, you can't imagine the amount of excitement for them to have this tool in to Blender. This would have clearly saved me one year when I started off using Blender in 2007 because I had that cube. I had no idea what to do with it for such a long time. And I'm sure so many people feel the same way. Okay, so we'll keep adding little elements around here just to de demonstrate all the different kinds of possibilities. I mean, to me, cube and cylinder are really the important ones. But if you do want to, you could also align a sphere to a specific angle. You know, or you can completely constrain it so you make it a perfect sphere. Even though it's a perfect sphere, right? But I guess if it is extended, it is still nicer for it to have an orientation. Now, this is just a very simple base primitives. But what if we start doing something that's a little bit more like a typical workflow in architectural design, right? So we have a box in here. We have a couple of windows, which will box out for the time being. And maybe we want to get a little bit fancy with our box. So we have one side that's leaning. And let me select the right thing here, select that edge and move it. So we have the add primitives tool both in object mode and in edit mode, which is fantastic because many times we do want to edit the same object, but add different types of meshes. So as you can see right away, we can make a prototype that looks way cooler, way nicer with so much less effort than it would have taken otherwise. And all of these elements are always adjustable because they're just like any mesh. So we can go Select now a face and slightly move it because everything is aligned to the correct place. Not sure why you would want something like that, but let's say we have something that looks like this. All right, so you can imagine now we can go and, and continue to edit this, but so much easier, so much quicker than we would have had to do otherwise, which is, you know, starting with this, duplicating a face, scaling it in, extracting it. So another really awesome feature of the new add primitive tool is that you can snap to different sites whenever you want. So if we press control while we're in the tool and you see, you can barely see it because the overlay is quite heavy, but they, there is a little snap and it snaps to all kinds of different things, right? So this is, I think a new snap system, slightly different snap system than the snap system we have here. I think eventually they'll become the same. We can either snap to a plane like we are now, or if I'm holding control at the moment and we're snapping to either an edge or a midpoint or along the line somewhere. So we could really easily click and hold control 
and then draw something out and I'm holding control continue to hold control so we can snap to the other vertex now and then draw it out so let's try this again on a different axis now so if you want to draw on this axis click and hold control and draw it out if you want to work on this axis let's click this midpoint hold control and draw it out really wonderful to see that we're getting ever so closer to really simple ease of use like SketchUp has because for me I don't use SketchUp but I love that you can just open the software and right away you know you can add a few shapes and then extract and subtract so between add primitive tool and extrude manifold we have a lot of options for editing geometry in new ways in case you're curious about how I found out this information, it's actually all available and clearly written. So all we need to do is go to the daily builds webpage within the Blender website and click new features and changes. And then there's different sections for all the different softwares. I clicked on Blender 2.92 Alpha modeling. I'm always most interested about modeling tools and it's the first thing that popped up. Primitive tool, add new interactive tool to create primitives with two clicks. So then to enable it, I had to dig around a little bit because I don't think it's written anywhere just quite yet. Thanks for watching as always and see you next time.